What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Mind Something. If you're new here, my name is Jake, and today I think we have what may be the final specs for the NVIDIA RTX 50 series. And armed with that information, I want to add it to the TPA calculator to compare it for its mining capabilities and its compute power against the RTX 30 series and 40 series. Now, if you aren't familiar with the TPA calculator, it's a spreadsheet that I created years ago after Ethereum went proof of stake. And what I wanted to do with that was get a good idea of how well all GPUs compare on average against one another across all algorithms. Now back then, I assumed that GPUs would no longer settle on one specific algorithm, and we would probably need to find a new way to describe the size of our GPU mining farm. And here we are, years later, it turns out I was right, but the TPA calculator needs an update with this latest release from NVIDIA. But before we get into the content, you know the drill, hit that like button and a quick word from today's sponsor. This video is brought to you by Crypto Miner Bros, providing you with the latest brand of miners from Bitmain to Jazz Miner to Ice River and more. Crypto Miner Bros has just about every ASIC you desire at the most competitive pricing and the price you see on the website is the price delivered to your door. Crypto Miner Bros comes highly recommended from some of the most recognizable leaders in the space because of their commitment to providing the best service and support in the industry. Check out their site and be sure to use code MINDSUM for an extra $70 off on your next order. So when I created this spreadsheet a couple of years ago, the purpose really was to do exactly what we're doing now with the 50 series, but back then it was the 40 series and it was the 7000 series from AMD. I took a bunch of information that I could gather on the specs of the GPUs, such as the bus size, how many CUDA cores, memory bandwidth, base clock, boost clock, and combined all that information together to give us a score. And this score represents an average across all algorithms. So whether we're talking about Autolycos, ProgPow, Kapow, ETHash, but also core-based algorithms such as KHeavyHash, which we don't use on GPUs anymore, but we may potentially someday, but you've got all kinds of core intensive algorithms like ZK Snark, Blake 3, Dynex Solve. So I want to kind of give you a rundown of how this would work. And then we're going to elaborate on this. And we're going to start adding some additional things such as TDP, FPS 16, FPS 32, FPS 64, and even the memory capacity. Because these things are going to be super important when it comes to picking what GPU you want in your farm now that we have platforms such as Salad and Vast AI and Chlor AI, and there's all kinds of different workloads that your GPU could potentially doing to earn you money. So for example, an RTX 3090 Ti gets a score of 144, a 3090 gets a score of 140, and a 3070 gets a score of 90. And we can even compare AMD cards. So we've got a 6950 XT getting a score of 89, and an RX 6600 XT getting a score of 56. Now at the moment, the best score is going to be the RTX 4090 coming in at 212. And if we move over in the spreadsheet here, I can break this down to kind of give you an idea of how a variety of cards would compare to one another if you're putting them in a rig. So for example, if you had a rig with six 3090 Ti's, you'd have a total TPA score of 869.52, and if you compare that with a rig of six RTX 3070s, you're looking at a score of 543. So here I'm comparing two cards that are pretty similar in hash rates and profitability. You've got an RX 6700 XT and an RTX 3060. And here you can see the different hash rates on each algorithm and we're dividing the amount of algorithms by five. So as far as hash rate is concerned, a 6700 XT would score 126.4 on the average hash rate, and an RTX 3060 would score 118.4. So this is taking into account multiple different algorithms, and we come up with a variance between the two GPUs of 1.06. Using the TPA calculator, we come up with a difference of 1.059. Perhaps a very small margin of error, but keep in mind this is only taking into account five different algorithms. There are many others to choose from. And zooming out on this, we have added the RTX 5000 series to the list here. And you can see the RTX 5090 is now the top dog coming in with a score of 271. And in case you have not seen the leaked specs yet, well, here you go. We've got them all right here. Now keep in mind, I do believe that these base clock and boost clock numbers are just a placeholder at the moment. 
So there'll be some small variants as these GPUs are released, but as far as the bus size, the CUDA cores, and the memory bandwidth, I think we have the correct numbers here. But I really do think that it is time for an update to the TPA calculator because now that we are using our GPUs in the realm of AI rentals and compute power, it's important to add some additional features such as TDP, the teraflops for FPS 16, FP32, and FP64, as well as the memory capacity because now the RTX 5090 is going to boast 32 gigabytes of VRAM. Now in this chart, you won't see a direct comparison with AMD cards because unfortunately there just isn't a lot of work out there for AMD cards on AI workloads. So we still have our old TPA score here, but we've added a couple of new columns. Now we have a large language model and AI efficiency chart, and then we have just an average of raw spec numbers given the data that we have now on the 50 series, which is going to be this column right here. Now in this particular column, what I've done is I've made the RTX 5090 a score of 100 intentionally so that we can grade the rest of the GPUs compared to its performance. And then lastly, we have one additional column, which is going to be an average of these three columns, which we'll just refer to as the new TPA score. So I think the chart works pretty well. I, it's certainly up to your interpretation. I'm going to leave this down in the description below so that you can have access to this and edit the formula to come up with these numbers if you want to. But I just want to give you a couple of examples to see whether or not this is actually working. So we're going to take a look at the RTX 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte. And in this case, when efficiency is included, it has a pretty good score compared to some of the others, such as a 4070, it slightly outperforms, and a 4070 Ti. Now keep in mind, this is taking into account the total TDP, and that can drastically swing its score in this particular category. But if you compare a 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte against a 4060 Ti 8 gigabyte, you can see there's a pretty drastic difference in performance there. Now, without the TDP being taken into account, this particular column, you can see that the 16 gigabytes still scores much higher, and that is simply because the amount of VRAM. So currently, the top dog is the 4090, coming in with a score of 126 on LLM and AI efficiency, or a score of 80 on just raw compute numbers. Again, in comparison to a 5090, which is a score of 100. Okay, great. So we've got a mountain of data here, but... What does it all mean? That's the reason you're here watching this video, right? You want to know how am I interpreting this and whether or not the 50 series is something that you should purchase. And I got to say, I am not as impressed with what I'm seeing here as I think many people were expecting, especially from the 5080 down to the 5070. Now the 5090 looks fantastic. It is definitely going to outperform a 4090 by a significant margin. And the fact that it's got 32 gigabytes of VRAM now is just phenomenal. That's going to be a huge breadwinner for you when it comes to large language models and other AI tasks. But let's take a look again here at the 5080. We've got a score of 113 compared to a 4080 at 114.69. Now as far as the original old TPA score, it does outperform it significantly, but you know, we're not looking at a very substantial increase with just raw compute power. Next up, we have the 5070 Ti, which does look pretty good in comparison to the old 4070 Ti. But when you look at the 4070 Ti Super, they are very close. In fact, the 4070 Ti Super is outdoing it just slightly there. Next up, we got the 5070 coming in with a score of 109 versus 111. 106 versus 110 and 49 versus 49 so i think the one thing that we really can't predict here though is going to be how gddr7 affects these different algorithms also the silicon itself you know we we do have very similar cuda cores and memory bandwidths as previous versions and you can kind of go from one generation to the other and really performance is drastically influenced by the CUDA cores and the memory bandwidth. I don't know that the core algorithms are really going to get that much more of a boost. So we're going to pull up the old TPA calculator. I have some additional information here that might be helpful trying to figure out whether or not the 5090 is even worth purchasing. So in this example, I've got four 5090s in a single rig 
and we get a TPA score of 1087.48. This would cost roughly about eight grand. And if we compare that to 3070s, it would take 12 3070s to equal four 5090s, coming in at a very similar TPA score, but we'd only spend three grand. I've also got the 4090. You would need five of those and your TPA score would be slightly less and you'd be spending about seven grand. That's if you're paying $1,400 a piece per 4090. So for me, when it comes to spending around $2,000 for a 5090, it's gonna be a pretty tough pill to swallow. However, I'm a content creator, so there's a pretty good chance that I am gonna get a 5090 and we'll do some tests and hopefully it surpasses all of my expectations. But when it comes to the 5080, 5070 Ti and the 5070, it's really not looking good in both mining and AI workloads. There's another chart that I shared probably over a year ago that basically compares every single GPU by things like efficiency, street price, value for hash rate, power supply and cables, and density. Now, I haven't updated this in a very long time, but based on the prices that I was putting in back then, with all things considered, the 4070 was pr a pretty good value. But that was also based on $400, which was what I was paying for them about February of last year. I'll leave a link to this down in the description below as well so that you can play with the numbers. But really what you want to edit in this spreadsheet is just going to be the price of the GPU. So you have to scroll down a pretty good ways. And where it says street price, you can just edit that and, and that'll adjust your final efficiency plus value per hash rate. I think really what it's going to boil down to could be best summarized by our late friend Ovalvortech. And that is... When it comes to building rigs and buying GPUs, you should be doing that based specifically on certain algorithms. So for example, if you were interested in acquiring Clore, you would want to build out a rig that was full of perhaps AMD cards or the most efficient card. And I think when it comes to the 50 series, it is going to be very good at a bunch of different tasks. Unfortunately, we don't know exactly what those are going to be just yet, but we do know they're expensive. And I am also hearing rumors that data centers are having a lot of trouble cooling these new chips. Now, of course, NVIDIA is going to blame board partners for their cooler designs. But let's say if they are building cooler designs based on what they're used to, that would insinuate that maybe GDDR7 is pulling more power than they expected. So that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed the content. I'm really curious to hear your comments, so please leave your comments down below. Let me know, what do you think? Is, is the 50 series going to live up to the expectations that everyone's been putting on it? Or is it simply just going to be another marginal upgrade like NVIDIA has been giving us in the past? The other thing to consider is, by the time you get these cards in your hands, is the bull run going to be just about over? You really got to ask yourself if it's worth upgrading, but we won't have the answer to that until we get all the numbers but hopefully my speculation has been somewhat on track but time will tell and until then I'll catch you on the next one